Hey everyone, Andrew, Day 2 Dryden, recording for Day 2 MTG, and if you're looking for a channel to help Goblin guide you the ways of modern burn, or actually most kinds of burn, uh, but primarily modern, this is the channel for you, please do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel, helps me out too, I really do appreciate it. Also, if you have any questions, comments, um, interesting lines of play, put that in the description below the video as well. So, we're here in uh, round five of uh, the Modern League. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record. So, this is this is like three or four days later now. So, uh, I'm in the replay op, or uh, I'm in the replay section of um, MTGO. So, we're going to go through the match. Fortunately, it wasn't too long. <laughs> Fortunately... Uh, well, you'll see. Uh, there, were, there were pros and cons to this match not having been recorded, but uh, and getting my live reaction. So uh, we'll see that. Okay, so um, we're here in round five. Here we go. Uh, we won the die roll, so we get to choose. We choose to be on the play. And uh, let's see what else. Here, oh, what's happening? Are we, why do we, we stalled out? There we go. Okay, great. We don't get to see images. Oh, hey, okay. All right, there they are. Uh, I believe, yes, I keep this hand. Um, I thought about it for a little bit. It's not a for sure keep. Uh, there's no turn one creature. There's no creature even in the hand for that matter. Um, it's got only one land, but there are, what, five? There are five spells I can cast off that one mana. So based off of that, and my usual rule of thumb is as long as I can cast at least three spells with what I have in my hand, that can sort of like get the opponent, you know, down and hopefully you draw that second land and then you can start to roll things out. Um, that I've had that rule for a long time now, so I don't know how good it is in the normal or in the current modern format. At one point in time, it was definitely fine. Right now, uh, I mean, it's it's still not great, but... Usually if you have a turn one creature and then a couple like bolts or something in your hand, that's a keepable one land hand. At any rate, so I do choose to keep this hand. Uh, so uh, let's see what happened. I think the opponent go. I think the opponent stays at seven cards, but I could be wrong here. We stalled out again. What's happening? Okay, the, no, sorry. The opponent went down to six cards. So yeah, we play the Sacred Foundry, pay two life, suspend a Rift Bolt. And we pass the turn. Let's open this up. All right, so there we go. And there's game one. <laughs> so as much as I like to make fun of Rift Bolt, because it's arguably our worst burn spell, sometimes it's an auto win. Sometimes it is a one card win condition. Who knew? So yeah, so based off of that, I had to try to figure out, like, okay, well, that's weird. What could our opponent be playing that they just went scoop, right? They mulligan down to a six-card hand, but a turn one Rift Bolt was good enough for them to just go to game two? Okay, well, so I thought to myself, okay, well, what might be the kind of matchup where you can just tell, you know, you can tell I'm on burn at this point, basically, right? Sacred Foundry into Rift Bolt. So what kind of deck might just give up based on that? Um... Especially when I don't think they even saw their... Yeah, I don't think they even went to their turn and saw their first card. I think they just gave up. So, uh, I end up guessing that it could have been maybe Infect, or... I don't know. I, I basically guessed that it might have been something like Infect, and I put in some spot removal. So, I think I put in a couple of uh, Path to Exiles... Um, a few other things. I'm not sure exactly. I'll see if I get to be able to see what it was in game two, if I can go like view sideboard. But I remember that, that was kind of my thought process at the time. Um, yeah, so, because again, like what do you do with this, right? There's very little information to make decisions on, so that's kind of what I was thinking, but I wasn't really sure. So let's see what happened in game two. All right, so here we are in game two. And you know what, actually, let me see if it lets me see the sideboard. Yeah, okay. So based off this, it looks like I took out a few skull cracks. And I think I took out a searing blaze. I put in a couple path to exiles. 
not remembering off the top of my head what was in the sideboard here. So I definitely put a couple of paths in. Yeah, so I have to double check. But yeah, I put a couple paths in and maybe I may, I guess I must have made at least one more change because I put these three skull cracks in. So I a serious. So there might have been like three or four cards. So there's a couple cards I can't remember that I put in. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's, I, I remember guessing that it was roughly maybe in fact, I don't know. This opening hand is great. We've got, again, a bolt, uh, which, hey, if they just conceded to a rift bolt, maybe a straight up bolt on turn one is good enough. And we're into Eidolon. So if it's against Infect or something like that, this is, this is pretty good. So we keep this hand. Uh, I forget what the opponent does. I think they might mulligan a couple times. Yeah, the opponent mulligans down to five cards. Uh, which again, I'm like, okay, so now I'm thinking maybe this is some kind of weird combo deck. They're trying to just like, you know, find the pieces. Maybe it's like Neo Brand or something, but I don't know. Oh, Deflecting Palms. That's what else I put in. If I thought it was Infect uh, or like something else, uh, I put Deflecting Palms in from the sideboard. Just remembered. Okay, so they start their turn one. Silent Clearing. This is definitely not Infect. This is clearly more of uh, maybe like a Death and Taxes or um, Abzan or Death Shadow. It could be any of these kind of things. So not horrible sideboarding. Um, you know, uh, if it's Death Shadow, things like Deflecting Palm and Path to Exile are still really great. So we didn't do too much that was crazy here. And, and so, uh, yeah, we sort of got a better idea of what we're up against now. We draw land. Don't mind seeing the third land, uh, but probably don't want to draw too many more after this. And I think, I, yeah, all right. And thinking it's possibly Death Shadow or something. I'm not super worried about the Searing Blazes because they're horrible anyway. So I think that's the reason I play this out. Not sure why. Because in now looking at this again, maybe inspiring. Oh, right. No, I remember now. Thinking this might have been Death and Taxes. Um, which I don't know how common it is now because they've changed their lists a lot because of a possible Leonin Arbiter coming down, uh, which again, I mean, I could just fetch in response, but I still did want to get this out of my hand as early as possible. Uh, that, that was the reason. It's a possible Leonin Arbiter. That's right. Uh, yeah, so we just pass the turn and this way we just get to hold up in case they play, I don't know, Thalia or if there's any other kind of silliness that comes out, but you can just bolt it. They don't do anything. They don't even make a land drop. So again, I'm like, okay, well, you mulligan to five. So, okay. So, probably just get a... Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, still not exactly sure what's going on. So, try to, you know, save a little bit of our life total. Again, could be Death Shadow. So, play the second land. And I think I just play the Eidolon here. Yep. Just play the Eidolon and pass. So... Okay, opponent, I don't know what you're doing, but let's, you know, I'm expecting a fatal push or a path to exile or something here. Because, um, you know, I mean, what else are they going to do, right? Like, why would, this doesn't really make sense to keep this at this point. But yeah, so yeah, they, they uh, the fatal push comes down, they take two. We're still in great shape, no matter what we're playing against. We've got a handful of burn spells and they're missing land drops. So we're in great shape. I think we see an Inquisition come out here. Yeah. So, and they, oh, yeah, sorry. And they have to pay life for the only piece of mana that they do have on the board right now. So, Inquisition, I think they take the bolt. Yeah, they take the bolt. I thought maybe Helix is what they would take um, to, if they were trying to, you know, maybe have a bit of a life race. But I don't know. I don't know what was in their hand. So, uh, we draw land. Not great. But again, our opponent's not hitting land drops. So, I don't know if I call this flooding. This is still a very good place to be in. So we get the Rift Bolt out of our hand because it's the hardest thing to get rid of. And then we just hold up a Lightning Helix. Um, still not really sure what's going on. But hey, can't give our opponent too much time to draw out of this horrible situation they're in. And then I think they miss another land drop here, actually. That is what happens. So, all right, well, I got to use my mana. I don't want to go too crazy here in case it is Death Shadow, but, like, at a certain point, I got to do something, right? So, um, yeah, so the Rift Bolt goes to their face, and then I think at this point, I'm thinking to myself, okay, again, I don't want to just use all my spells and then get killed by a Death Shadow when they've played one spe two spells and drawn one land all game. That's kind of embarrassing. But... 
we uh, we draw another burn spell. They're one damage away from you know anything, or sorry, from being dead. So and be because of this silent clearing costing one life to use. So okay, we play a lava spike, and I or no, no, I get to play a land here still. So we play a land, and then we just hold up what is pretty much. Or no, I don't even hold it up. I think I just cast it all right now, forcing them to not be able to tap their mana. I mean, I could try to play at instant speed and be a little tricky or something, but I, I think I just cast it right now. Yeah, right? Sure. You got something, you better use it right now. Okay, so looking pretty good here. I mean, our opponent's just sitting dead in the water. This isn't much of a game, right? Oh well, that's modern for you. If you watched the game that came out Tuesday this week, you will see that I went through a very similar but opposite problem. <laughs> so sometimes that's just the way it works. And this is actually the only reason I ended up finding out that this was in fact Death Shadow. The opponent went, all right, game's over. Let's just cast the Death Shadow. Hey, at least it's a 13-13. And, uh, you know, we're not going out on your terms, Day 2 Dryden. We're going out on our terms. Crack the silent clearing. So... Not exactly the most, uh, <laughs> not exactly the most dynamic or exciting end to the league, uh, but you know what? After getting kicked around for a few rounds, this has been this has been a rough. It was a rough league this week. Uh, it was kind of nice to get what was effectively a buy. So that was the match. If you have any questions about how that played out, again, normally this is a really interactive sort of a kind of doing a dance in this matchup. You know, when do I go for it? When do I not? Because, you know, uh, Lethal Death Shadow coming back at you is a real concern if you if you can't finish them off with the spells in your hands. So, if you do have any questions about the few decisions I maybe could have made, uh, you know, throw them my way. But uh, either way, it's been Andrew. Day 2 Dryden going through a quick replay of what I guess we'll call a game of Magic. Um, and then previous, in the past, uh, Andrew is going to go through... Um, post league deck tech with you in the in the video that's about to come up so hopefully you have a great rest of your day hopefully you enjoyed the uh the league and uh hopefully you subscribe so that i can see you next time all right so as the people who will be watching this video now know i forgot to hit the record button sounds great luckily it was not a very interactive or exciting match you didn't miss much but now we uh we are here for the post league wrap up I took the Wooded Foothills out of the list again here, which is why there's only 19 lands and 59 cards, so that everyone everything could fit in the in the screen a bit better. But um, yeah, so okay, so the Smash of Smithereens and the Shattering Sprees were good. The Leyline of Combustion, we never saw a matchup for it. A lot of the cards we just didn't see. There's a, I think part of the problem with Burn right now is that there's a lot of different things going on in the metagame and it's kind of hard to play for it maybe these hushbring i wanted to try these hushbringers the only matchup i brought it in it was horrible just the way our opponent's hand worked out so maybe it's a bit too cute right now but there seems like there's a lot of control and again like these greedy mana bases i i can't get over the fact that there are so many greedy mana bases out there i think I really keep feeling like Blood Moon or something to punish these would be super helpful, but I don't know what, um, and I don't know how to how to go about that yet because all of the all of the mono red answers are like three mana, right? There's like Blood Moon, Molten Rain, things like that. Like they're they're not aggressively costed, and it's it's tough. Um, so I'm not sure. What that means i don't know if i i feel like like a mono red build is is still maybe it's got a lot of play to it maybe like a transformational sideboard is what we need to do to like really sort of get on top of the metagame but even still uh like this deck plays fine maybe don't bring the hushbringers in in this wide open meta right now maybe don't do that maybe that's a bit cute and maybe the uh ley line of no the ley line of combustion is fine we didn't face burn or jund or anything and those are like the matchups i really wanted it for but maybe the hushbringers and maybe the engineer no i like the engineer explosives it would have been good against death shadow and stuff um you know i don't know it, it's hard it's hard to say but i think this deck is generally probably the way i want it the one problem about this deck is it's a little clunky on two drops i have a little more 
I have a few more two drops than I, than I want. Um, and we saw Searing Blaze look so bad in some of those matchups. Um, so maybe going down to two copies is, is correct. And putting in, I don't know, like a Shard Volley or something. Or uh, like another one of these sort of like, you know, low mana. Like you sort of cheat on their mana costs a bit. That's maybe the one change I would make going forward. If there's any changes you'd make to the deck, let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are on Burn right now and uh, the deck in general. But uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on this week's uh, set of matches. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. Uh, again, do check out the Patreon page. There will be a new deck list and sideboard guide out this week. Uh, by the time this video is posted, it should have been out already. So uh, it's on the Patreon page, free of charge, no paywall. Keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, either way, this has been Andrew. Day 2 Dryden, wishing you a happy rest of your day.